Hello wine lovers, Trophy Wine Hunter, welcome back to my wine channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing a very exciting wine from Portugal. It's a white wine from a kind of superstar winemaker, Luis Siebra, and it's his Zisto Cru white wine. And so this was 2018 and actually this was featured in the um, New York Times magazine. So I'll, in the commentary section, I'll have a link to that. This is identified as one of the uh, kind of the superstar or the up and coming producers of Portugal wine. So Portuguese wine is really, I hope to actually visit one day. Um, it's an up and coming um, wine region. For all those kind of people that are looking for something new, go to Portugal. They're doing some great stuff right now. Just like um, if you look at kind of what happened in Chile, maybe 20 years ago. This is what's happening in Portugal. Portugal obviously is known for port, but now they're trying to change that image because if they can make good port, I'm sure they can make other good stuff, right? So, and for some, and then they've got this one mindset change. We don't just have to do port guys. We can do other serious wines. And Louis Sieber is one of these um, innovative winemakers that's taking it to the next step. Um, great. Watch this guy. This guy's going to make some great wines. I, the other the world's going to catch up and they're going to recognize him they already have but you're going to see him more and more in um wine experts writing about him wine magazines rating him highly getting on top lists get the wines before they start to skyrocket they're they're not inexpensive um again i was fortunate to get this wine given to me by someone i think it's in the 80 dollar range um but it's gonna it's kind of comparable to uh, Grand, Premier Cru and Grand Cru wines of the Burgundy region. Let's talk a little bit about the winery and uh, Louis Sibra. So Louis Sibra spent about 10 years as a winemaker in Neoport. Um, and from that, he's created his own winery in 2012. So he's a minimalist. And I had the actually good fortune of meeting him in Vancouver. Good guy, um, not a PR guy, not overly marketing oriented just a regular guy a regular winemaker um i think he's um you know what do you expect from a winemaker right he's just a regular guy um, but he really knows his stuff and you talk wine to him he's very technical but he's not flashy or anything like that just a good guy i think um so from he, what he does and I, he his belief is very minimalistic he does he just wants the expression of the terroir he doesn't want to do too much to the grapes. He wants to have um, very um, uh, high selection of the grapes. So you have very low yields. And his belief is that he actually plants everything. He doesn't kind of separate out grape types. He just plants everything in the vineyard and then takes from there. So this is kind of blend. And I'm, I'm going to have it on the, in this section. It's of kind of local Portuguese grapes. I'm not even going to try to pronounce them. Uh, but I'll have it in the commentary section. But it's basically, he's using a blend of a various um, Portuguese grape varietals that are not that familiar to other people. And what he kind of wants to do is create a crew level wine. Right? So the, one of the grape, the major blend or the major grape in this is a grape called Rabagato. 70% is Rabagato. And so Rabagato um, is a, kind of a fairly neutral grape kind of like chardonnay um, and it allows you to um, it's like um, an artist's canvas right to me chardonnay is like a canvas but you can it's 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 good quality it's got a base and then you paint on it and you add to it that's to to me what rabogato is like and like chardonnay is like so um, in and itself it doesn't have a lot of flavor right uh, but it's got structure and all the other elements to be able to build around. And um, so that's kind of uh, what he wanted to do is create a, a wine that is um, very uh, consistent or very f uh, comparable to Burgundy uh, white wines. Um, very low um, um, production of this. I think I'm going to have, I'm going to check this out. I think it's on the bottle. So I think it's about, I'm guessing around 200 cases, not a lot. Um, that's produced. I'll have that in the comment section to kind of confirm that. So this is the label. Beautiful. I'll also mention it's got a um, it's got a like 
sealed wax cork, which is a nice touch. It's really heavy um, cork, uh, wax. Um, so I guess it's made for long-term aging, but I've never had this long enough uh, to like Louis Sieber. I love his minimalistic style, beautiful blank label, Zisto Crew. I like this very much. It is a kind of like a crew level and they've got some um, details on the side here. But I really like the minimalistic um, label. I think it works well with this. It is a crew level, like it's meant to be like a cre premier crew wine from Burgundy almost. Color is nice and light. Um, I think the light here is a little bit um, shiny, so it's it's probably a little bit darker than what it shows. This almost shows it's like really light yellow, but it's actually darker than that in, um, if you get it in the right light. All right, so let's taste the wine. I will tell you that I did have it at a very nice restaurant last night. Um, it's uh, it's called Burdock and Company. I will have a review of that on my other channel, uh, Trophy uh, Life Experiences. Maybe I'll put a link to that. It's a really good restaurant. You gotta check it out on Main Street here in Vancouver. Um, really great, uh, knowledgeable wine people. I love the place. So served there with their. Um, their price fix menu or their um, they've got a set menu but it was a, it was a really great pairing with some of their dishes so okay so this is the day after a very aromatic citrus notes peach um, almost like a gassiness like gasoline almost a little bit but very and some floral elements really nice nose to this The predominant flavor is citrus with some good acidity, but then as, but it's got weight on it. So an oiliness and a weightiness to it that was really good with food. And then the aftertaste got some orange grind. Um, and I'll let you know that I had this in the fridge, but then I took it out about, let's say, about an hour ago. And now it's getting, it's not room temperature, but it's not. Uh, it's a little bit cold and I find with good wines, good white wines, you shouldn't chill them too much. It kind of loses the flavor. I sometimes um, am hesitant to kind of have wines, uh, white wines more at room temperature, but I should because in this example, it really brings out the flavors. Um, it actually tastes better, I think, in this setting. You know, good tanginess, citrus notes, good weight. I really like the weight of this and a little bit of oiliness. Really good um, wine with food. I don't know if it's been rated by Wine Spectator. My rating, 90 points, maybe towards 91. The more I drink this wine, the better I like it. All I know is that I've served it to, I must be like a dozen or more people. And I don't think anyone hasn't liked this wine. So... Um, really great producer from Portugal. A quality wine, interesting story. Um, yeah, it's really, uh, the more I drink it, the more I actually appreciate it. Um, and I've had probably six or seven bottles of this and with different people, and every time I've had it, people have been impressed with this wine. Wow. Until next time, happy drinking.